Hi, I'm Josh, your English learning guide. Welcome back to English Hacks. Today we're going to be talking about contractions. Contractions are a bit confusing for a lot of English learners. And in my experience with the students that I've worked with, they have been taught incorrectly by their previous teachers who were not native speakers. So for example, if they were from Russia and they had an English teacher who is a native Russian speaker, not a native English speaker, they were often taught wrong rules about contractions. So today we're going to play a little game to introduce this topic. We have four statements here which are very big important statements related to contractions and each one has a question mark. And what I want you to do is tell me do you think that each statement is true or false? Contractions are a natural and normal part of English. Natural and normal part of English. True. That is true. Statement number two. Contractions are informal. Informal, meaning not formal. So if you talk to your friend, they're fine. If you talk to your professor or your boss at work, you can't use contractions. Is that a true statement? No. No, it is not. Very big no. Completely wrong. Completely wrong. I've had quite a few students tell me that their previous teachers taught them this, and this is absolutely incorrect. This is correct. We use contractions all the time. In fact, as we'll see in a future video, we have many written contractions, such as I'm, your, often pronounced your, or uh, I've done with the present perfect, I've. Just some examples, as you probably know. But we also have even more spoken contractions that we don't write. For example, if I say, the cats are loud. The cats are loud, right? Rah, lots of noise. In writing, this is how we would write it. Okay, we would never write this. Cats, apostrophe, re. Don't write that. Nope. Looks very bad. Even informally. Even in informal writing, we do not write that. Do not write that. In speech, the cats are loud. Cats are. Cats are. So we are contracting just like this in speech. Okay. We'll learn more about that later. Don't worry too much right now. So contractions are not, not informal. They are a natural and even required part of English if you want to sound natural. Number three, statement number three. If I see a contraction, so for example, if you read this, I'm, okay, I apostrophe M, or this one, or this one, it doesn't matter. If you see a contraction, and you were to say that contraction, you, re you say what you read, right? Then I can say it not contracted. So is it true or not that if you see this, that it is perfectly fine to say I am? Nope. If it's contracted, it's supposed to be said contracted which is the most common way to say this. Which brings us again to this last statement. We can uncontract, meaning take a written or spoken contraction and uncontract it, 
undo the contraction, we can uncontract for emphasis. If we want to emphasize, that is true. That is absolutely true. And that brings us back to this point and this point, okay? If you see a contraction, it is meant to be pronounced as a contraction. Written contractions are very common, but especially in speech, if you don't have a special reason to say it in this form, uncontracted, if there's no special reason, then it will usually sound strange. That's how common and natural it is for us to contract. Because one of the biggest things you have to understand about English is that in the pronunciation, in the contractions, in many ways, the language tries to flow as smoothly as possible. Also usually very quickly, but as smoothly as possible. So it's a lot faster and easier to say I'm than I am. Or you're instead of you are. Or I've done instead of I have done. This is one reason why contractions aren't just informal and why you want to use them whenever possible. Because if you do uncontract like this, a native speaker will probably think that you are emphasizing. And depending on the context, depending on what you're saying, that could potentially sound strange. It could potentially be confusing. It could potentially sound very strong, maybe rude. Okay. So the normal thing to do with contractions is to contract whenever possible. As we see more videos about contractions, we will talk about what exactly that normal is. So that is all for today's video on contractions. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. I will try to address them in future videos. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any of the key important information you have to know about contractions or so that you don't miss any other very awesome English Hacks video. And I will see you guys in the next one.